Hey everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal. I am a part-time online reseller and in today's video I am showing you one of the most important apps that you can have as a reseller. I use it all the time. So I am currently on my iPhone, which is what I primarily work on for everything. Photographing, filming, listing. I do like 95% of reselling on my phone. I apologize if you do not have an iPhone, things are gonna look a little different for you. But as we know, we have the iPhone photo application here. It's where all of our pictures live. Google Photos is basically just extra storage and backup for your videos and your pictures on your phone. I do believe that you can achieve kind of the same thing that I do when I'm researching my items on the Google Lens app or just the plain Google app, but I like the Google Photos because again, it backs up all my pictures and I can delete them from my iPhone so I'm not using up a lot of space. So I do believe in order to have the Google Photos app, you do need a Google account, but if you're like me, I'm pretty sure I have every login under the sun, Google, YouTube, Microsoft, etc. <laughs> So when you open the app, it comes up to the main screen where all of your pictures are. And then also up here at the right hand screen, you'll see my little picture here. And that just gives me everything about my Google's photo app. So you'll see, I do have a Google account. Um, it'll back up my images. As soon as I take a picture, it will back those up. You can certainly turn that off to not back up everything, but you know, back up certain pictures that you want. But then it just gives you a little bit of information here. And especially important is the account storage. If you use your 15 gigabytes, you can purchase more storage for a very low uh, cost per month. I think it's like $1.99 for a couple extra gigabytes, but thankfully I haven't had to do that yet. One really cool thing that has nothing to do with reselling is up at the top, it'll give you suggestions to look at. So my phone is full of my dog's pictures and me and my fiance, so you'll see all of them up here. And it's a good way to remember things from years ago. So the Google Photo app can do a lot of different things. Not only does it store all your pictures and video, you can also use the Google Lens portion of the app to look up specific items. So for example, I'm currently listing vintage jewelry. I haven't edited any of these, so I'll just take this one as an example because it's very pretty. So down at the bottom, you'll see these four little pictures. I'm going to use the third one in that is basically a square with a little circle in it, and I'm going to hit that, and it is going to search on all of the internet for something that looks similar to this. And then if you pull up on your screen here, it'll give you every image that Google pulled up that is similar to yours. And then you can click on the actual search that comes up. It'll give you like a screenshot of where it's listed, kind of some keywords that you can use. Um, that's similar to mine, but not exactly. I do believe that this is exactly the same. So you can click the little visit button and then it'll take us directly to eBay. And yes, this is exactly my item because it is German and, oh, there's only one picture. Okay, well, that's not helpful. Let's go find another one, see if there's more pictures. So this one's also on eBay. I think this is just the pendant. Let's see. Oh, no longer available, but here is the original listing. Perfect. So people are calling it uh, vintage crystal enamel flower pendant. Mine is definitely just plastic and not crystal. So not only do I use Google Photos to look up my exact item, but I will also use it to look up keywords because using keywords and listing items is kind of tough sometimes, especially when you know you're on like listing number 10 and you can't really describe items anymore. I will go through Google image and see what other people are saying. So it looks like people are using keywords like reverse painted, roses, flowers, beauty and the beast, birth flower necklace, January the Dahlia. Ours isn't a Dahlia, but it gives you an example of what you can use to put in your listing. So to get out of here, we're just gonna pull down. I'll do one more example to show you how it can pull up an exact item or something very, very similar. Let's do, let's do this one. Again, we're gonna click the little square with the circle in it and it's gonna do its Google magic. And look at that. That is exactly my item, the first two. So vintage gold tone, red rhinestone, prong set, probably brooch. And this one over here is vintage gold pinwheel brooch, ruby red rhinestone. Wow, they want $32 for this. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to list mine for $32, but that's nice. So definitely use the word pinwheel. I like that. Uh, Ruby red is a good keyword and the keyword prong set is also good to use. And then down below, these are all just very similar ones. I am just always impressed that Google can pull up exactly the item that I'm looking for, even if it's a vintage jewelry piece, vintage clothing, it is definitely an amazing tool. And I will also use this in thrift stores or antique stores. If I'm trying to ID the maker of a glass object, I'll take a picture of it and then do Google lens search and it'll bring up exactly what it is, exactly the brand, exactly the pattern, and it's just fantastic. This app is free to download. Again, I think you just need your Google login and you're ready to go. Okay, so that's one way I use it by identifying the exact piece. The next thing I do for Google image is also search for patterns and prints. Trying to describe patterns and prints sometimes is very, very hard. Like this one, for example. I think this is like a jacquard, maybe damask print, but we're gonna find out what Google has to tell us. Let's see, hostess seashell print. Well, it's definitely not seashell but it says brocade there's a jacquard skirt uh, woven brocade okay those are good keywords that I can use I don't see my pattern so what I will also do is pull the square a little bit closer in so that it will just search for that particular pattern um, it's not really coming up oh there's one that's very similar so they're saying that this is a jacquard knit and it's fleur, which is flower or French for flower, I believe. Oh, here's another one. Uh, timing black and gray leggings with a snowflake star design. Mm, I think those are more flowery to me, but it is good to see what other people are calling it. And I don't see any other patterns that look like ours. This is kind of similar. Um, breathtaking Spanish sky pattern. Those are carpets. Okay, cool. So that's another way that I use it to look up patterns. And I have one more image that we can look up. This, I already know the pattern to it, but sometimes I get confused with jaguar, cheetah, and leopard. So using Google Lens is a perfect way to identify that. Oh, look, it actually pulled up a specific item. Colorworks animal print cardigan. Well, it's definitely not that, but that's neat. And I have used Google Lens to identify shirts, pants, shoes, everything. It doesn't just have to be a snapshot like of the print of like this. You could actually Google image this entire garment and it will tell you what it is. So down below we have cheetah print, cheetah print, leopard print, um, cheetah print, leopard print so i'm not the only one that has issues with cheetah leopard and uh, jaguar but this is definitely a leopard print because i already looked it up before i started doing this video and you'll see the one in the middle here the leopard is pretty much what i have a little bit of jaguar but definitely not cheetah cheetah is more like polka dots actually okay back to google images so again, that's how I look up patterns and prints. And the last way I like to use Google Lens through Google Photos is to translate items for me. So we all have seen tags where it's not in our language. So we're just going to, again, hit that square with the circle in the middle. Okay, so it's picked up on the Shanti 2, which I've already tried to look up this brand. This is an actual item that's already listed. I just pulled this tag from it. But if you see on the white tag over to the right, see how it kind of highlighted those symbols? So if you go over to translate, which is the first option here, look at that. It translates it for us. So it's made out of polyester, polyurethane, and the lining is polyester. And it tells me it's made by Gato Incorporated Limited. And I'm not sure why they changed the tag, but okay. So that's one cool way. And let's do the back of the tag, which gives us the care instructions. So again, we're going to do Google Lens. We're going to translate. And look at that. Avoid using steam iron, use a pressing cloth when ironing. Like it's perfect. It tells us exactly what it says. I'm very, very impressed that Google can do this so quickly. So I do automatically have all of my pictures back up into Google apps, but when I'm done with them, I just take them and I delete them. 
That way it doesn't clog up my storage and I'm able to keep all my other pictures of my derpy dogs, sunsets, corn mazes, and some fall pictures. So that is how I use Google Lens through Google Photos to do research on my items. It cuts your research down in half. Sometimes it'll bring up the exact item, the exact style, everything, and it's very helpful for keywords and for translation. If you liked this video and you got good value out of it, please like this video. It gives me good feedback so that I know I can make more of these videos or less of these videos if no one likes them. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye!